live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering Magento Imagine 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hi, welcome back to The Cube. Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick at Imagine 2019 at the Win Las Vegas, talking all about e-commerce innovation and technology, consumer changes, all that good stuff. Joining us next is Adam Justice, the Director of Product Marketing for the Adobe Experience Cloud. Adam, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me, thank you. This is a really high energy event. It is. All day. It's palpable. It's, yeah. I think it might be partly because uh, there's a lot of orange here. It's a pretty <laughs> energizing color. People have had very interesting entrances and exits on stage coming from above and below. We've heard a lot of great um, testimonials from partners, customers, Adobe folks, Magento folks. Customer experience is critical to any product, any service, retailer, big or small. So true. Talk to us about, you've been with Adobe for a long time. Talk to us about, from your perspective, the essentials really good customer experience management. Absolutely, thank you, uh, thanks for the question. It's great to be here. So at Adobe, we've really evolved, I think, as sort of the needs and roles of our customers have. And I think the primary motivator for their evolution has been uh, the customer, the customer itself. And whereas it used to be enough for us to think about we're going to provide a winning product or a service. I think all of us can agree, and it's easy for us to, it's easy for us to agree now because we're all a focus group of one, we know what we like. We like an experience that actually feels like it's worth having. It's not enough to just put a product or a service out there. It needs to feel like something that actually not only feels natural, but it feels additive to our lives in some way. And so what was once sort of a, a relatively straightforward product development process or promotional process, now is very much about how are we addressing the needs of the consumer in a way that, uh, that is holistic, that respects the channels that they want to interact with our brand on, that respects the devices through which they want to uh, either consume our product or research our product. So Adobe is really trying to sort of uh, understand the dynamics of the market today and bring solutions to the customers who now have this broader sort of stewardship. And I would say the things that we're seeing that are core to that are first, you're not going to deliver a meaningful experience to a customer unless you understand that customer. And understanding that customer largely now comes down to data. And That's a lot amazing. of folks will feel like, well, that certainly seems logical, but we're awash in data. How do we actually get to the point where the data is telling us the story so we can leverage that information and then tell a brand story? Tell some kind of, present a compelling experience. And then you add to that the dynamics, obviously, right now, about, and the entirely justifiable concerns about my privacy and the regulations there. And Adobe's going directly at that with the Adobe Experience Platform in order to effectively coalesce a meaningful point of view or sort of representation of, of the customer in a way that respects their privacy that an experienced steward can then look at that and say, not only do I understand who this person is, but I have context and an understanding of what it is they're looking for, uh, what is their intent, what is the context of this interaction now, so that I can present a meaningful experience. That obviously gets you part of the way, but then um, knowing is only half the battle, right? Maybe not even half. Then you actually have to kind of rally around, well, what, uh, what tools and content do we have at our disposal to ultimately present a compelling experience. You know, at Adobe we like to say that emotion is the currency of experience, and if you're not actually leveraging meaningful content and presenting it in context, then you're not going to evoke an emotion that is worth evoking. So definitely have the data piece, then the content piece, um, but I would also add, and you've probably had other uh, people sitting in this seat talking about how the complexity of all that has certainly exceeded now the capacity of at least my brain to manage in a singular sort of engagement with a customer, let alone at scale, millions of times a day. So the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning now is so core. I would think that it's absolutely kind of, it's sort of the gearbox that's, that's uh, turning at the center of the data on one hand, the, the, the content and elements, the assets, the offers on the other, 
that allows for ultimately the coalescing of those things and then the delivery of an experience worth having. So that may have been like a $2 answer to a two cent question, but really I feel like that's sort of the component pieces that we're seeing at play and sort of Adobe's motivation in going into that space. That came out when we were at Adobe Summit a couple weeks ago, I can't keep track, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and I found it really interesting, especially with Adobe's roots, really in the content generation side, right? All the way back to the creatives and, and the creators of that great content. And now to be able to use the sophistication of the tools to A-B test, I think Best Buy was on stage and they did four million or 40 million customized emails. So now, you know, take this great creative, A-B test it to the nth degree, again, using the data and the context and, and the and, and the knowledge of what those customers are all about. And now it seems like the Magento piece is kind of the, the icing on the cake to, to actually have the ability to get the transaction associated with all this other process to, to, to bring the cash register, if you will. You're absolutely right, Jeff, you're absolutely right. At Adobe, when we, when we executed sort of the, well, we announced our intent to, to acquire, we were talking about uh, how does Adobe facilitate or help every experience become shoppable and every moment personal. And really that was a, that was a claim we couldn't make without, uh, without the Magento piece. So it is absolutely, um, it's a hand in glove relationship. And now, especially as we've all evolved as consumers, I mean to imagine that we would be subscribing to socks or that we could one click purchase just about anything, um, you need the technology that can kind of keep pace with the expectations. And that's what it's all about, because so many of those experiences that Adobe's intent on enabling our customers to present, uh, so many of them culminate in a transaction of some sort. So the Magento is absolutely, not only the icing on the cake, um, which I think is a, it's a, it's a great metaphor, but it's also so integral, right? Now it's becoming like a fundamental or elemental part of what we're trying to accomplish. Right. So delivering this comprehensive customer experience, managing out analytics, advertising, marketing, commerce. The one thing that when you were kind of describing the core components of customer experience management, I'm thinking is time. Because as consumers, we have so much choice. And if we meet friction at any point along the way, we're going to churn and we're going to find somebody else who's going to be able to deliver this product or service right in a, less, in a frictionless way. So when you were talking about AI, for example, I was thinking, Comment on how that can be leveraged to be able to facilitate that just-in-time shoppable experience that converts to a sale that is able to do so in a way that's personable or, or personalized right. to the customer experience and taking that insight to go, oh, right now, there's an action that Lisa just took, we've got to offer this right now. Right. Well, you know, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about customer experience management or CXM, you'll hear us use the acronym. In a way, I just, I kind of love the absurdity of it. Right, I mean, when you think of the scale, to say something like we're going to make every experience shoppable and every moment personal, it's just, uh, it's, the, the scope of that and to imagine that that's possible is almost absurd. But when you introduce the advancements that we're seeing in artificial intelligence and machine learning now, it's literally going from the absurd or from the realm of science fiction into very real. It's, and, and, and that's where it, what, it, what Adobe's looking at. Like how can we literally take some sort of statement like, we're going to personalize experiences at, at like every in, across the customer journey, and we're going to do it at scale and in real time. I think you brought up the component of like uh, of, of real time, and really, unless you're considering how we're going to meet the needs of the customer in the moment that they're expressing that need, then it's really moot. So, and it, and it is absolutely uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning that we're seeing sort of expressed now across the Adobe Experience Cloud that are making that happen in, in multiple ways. One of the ways would be simply by um, shortening that span between sort of the latent genius that marketers are walking around in their heads and actual execution. So how can we kind of take the work, some of the friction out of the workflows that allow them to translate their ideas into offers? And another place would be uh, how do we uh, shorten the space between um, a signal that we get, say in behavioral data, that we see show up either in an app or on a, on a website, and then churn through all of the possibilities of what we could present, apply algorithms to kind of determine what is the next best offer, next best experience, and then present that in a way that actually feels, if not real time, pretty close to it. And that would not be possible 
without, um, without artificial intelligence at Adobe, uh, our product in that space that we, that we reference is Adobe Sensei. So you'll hear us talk about Adobe Sensei and that's kind of the, the umbrella that stretches around the, the different elements that I was talking about. So interesting how just how the expectation game has changed and, and actually now being enabled by the technology under the covers. Because it used to be, right, we made decisions based on a sampling of the data after the fact, right? right? Now the expectation is I want to make a decision based on all the data, or as close to all as I can get, in near real time, real time defined as enough time to do something about it, which is a completely different way to attack that problem and, and has really changed the expectation game, but that is the expectation game now from the customers who are hoping that thing shows up that's supposed to show up because it's really what I'm interested in now and can't you figure that out based on all my activity? That's right. In fact, I was just, I was just having conversations with my children and it kind of blows my mind. They're, they literally wonder why when we order something on Amazon it's not there like within an hour or two. <laughs> didn't, didn't we just buy that? And interestingly, in some, in, in some markets now you're almost at a point where that's actually reality. And so the fact that we've witnessed in such a short time frame this, uh, this kind of realization uh, in this new reality, it is absolutely, it, it's absolutely fascinating to observe. And it, we can only kind of blame and, and, and congratulate ourselves, right, as consumers exactly. for pushing these expectations that now brands are doing everything they can to, keep, to, to keep up with. But the, I think one of the magical things is that we're still, we're still surprised and delighted on a regular basis. And that's one of the things that I love about Adobe and our ability to sort of, to activate the things that, that marketers and people who are responsible for customer experience know that they want to do. We're giving them tools now where it's actually not only a reality to respond in these incredibly short time frames, but do it in a way that can be super creative and, and breakthrough or differentiated, which is, a, which is a meaningful requirement for brands today to be able to do all of that stuff but do it in a way that is unlike their peers. Exactly, like we were talking about before, when you have so much choice as a consumer, especially for certain you know, types of products that are commodities, if it's not in a way that's differentiated and unique, I'm going to go somewhere else where I can find that experience that really kind of connects with me on whatever level, whatever the product or service is. So being able to create that creative, unique experience. And we were talking with Jason about what, what uh, was announced this morning with Adobe Sales Channel and the um, Adobe branded storefront and being able to give merchants, even within, sorry not Adobe, Amazon, mm -hmm. I've been talking for hours, giving them the ability, say within an Amazon marketplace, to be, elevate their brand a little bit and make it a little bit more unique so that they have a little bit of an edge and can maybe express some brand creativity within right. that platform. Right. I, I, I really do appreciate that element of, of, of what we're doing, uh, having come from kind of an advertising background myself, where you know that you're, the, the, the mental bandwidth you get with anyone is so limited, and the opportunity to differentiate is, you have to grab it when it presents itself. And so, in order to, um, we risk to become like overly scientific about this, and definitely there's, there's so much science involved with it now, but we can't forget the art. We can't forget the opportunity to literally, to, uh, to, to, to take that, those, even those minor elements, and sometimes it's the signals that we get that say someone is prepared or interested in this type of experience, but then how do we make that experience not feel surgical, but rather actually impressive and emotional even, uh, and so that's one of the things that I love about Adobe. We really do try and embrace, uh, push forward on the science aspect, but respect the fact that a lot of brand building and a lot of meaningful experiences that we have are absolutely also rooted in the art. So, That's a great point. It. It's really helping customers kind of fine tune and dial the art with the science. You're a product marketing guy. What is maybe a favorite customer example that shows a customer that's really been able to leverage the data, the creativity to deliver differentiated brand value to their customers? Anything come to mind in particular? Well certainly there's, you know, there's, there's so many. I, I feel like for me, the when I really feel impacted by a brand, sometimes it's when I break out of sort of the, the mundane or I get, to go on a, I get to go on vacation with my family. And I feel like, interestingly, just going to a, a remote locale, sometimes it, it can either be magical or it can be like a horror show, right? <laughs> but the way brands like Marriott 
uh, Starwood, Marriott Bonvoy now, the way that they're, they're, they're embracing the opportunity to sort of bring technology in a way that, almost, that feels very additive but almost transparent to where now you're actually, you can, if you're, you, based on your loyalty program and you have the right app on your phone, you can walk straight to the door and unlock the room. I mean, it, that's, that's huge. And it takes something that could have, like, that might have been one of the bigger friction points, like standing in a line to check in, and it just makes it fluid. It makes it feel like, you know, this is the type of experience that I want to have. That I'm just getting things done and things feel good and the opportunity for a brand to go in and sort of think about where are those points where I might be introducing friction rather than feel good, and being able to remove those and have technology do it in a transparent way, I think is really, it's really impressive. It can be absolutely transformational. It absolutely can. For it's sure. It's such a good example of just kind of twisting the lens. You know, the check-in process, who would ever think well, we're not going to change the check-in process? It's a check-in process, but for someone to actually go, wait a minute, that is, a, that, is, that is of their whole experience of their time with us, your family, for a couple, three, four days. You know, that is a major friction point. You're tired, you just got in from the airport. Yeah. You know, the kids are hungry. You just want to drop your bags and then to stand in line. So, so to use technology to redefine that little piece of that whole week that you're spending in that property is really creative before you even get to the technology enablement to make it so. Or, or, or take, for example, one of the most painful things that can happen in travel when you're on a flight that's delayed or canceled. And then not only are you dealing then with just kind of the emotional duress of, of having to recalculate everything, but then you have to stand in line forever. But now you can pull out your app and at your fingertips you have potential, you, you, you have the opportunity to be recognized as I'm this passenger, I have this sort of status, here are alternatives and being able to sort of uh, take control or engage in that way that, 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 that leverages technology to, again, sort of remove friction and, and add solution. I just think we're really at the tip of the iceberg in the way that we're going to see this type of uh, technology infusing into things that we feel are more pure experience than just marketing and campaigns. Exciting, exciting times. Adam, thank you so much for joining Jeff and me on theCUBE this afternoon. It has been a pleasure. Look forward to hearing lots of great things to come and really helping to drive those experiences with the art and the science. Indeed. Thank you for your right, time. Thank you. Thanks. For Jeff Frick, I'm Lisa Martin coming to you live from Imagine 2019 at the Wynn in Las Vegas. Thanks for watching.